Guys, what a way to dispatch, defeat, and destroy Manchester United. Yesterday, Arsenal versus Manchester United match was the height of Premier League display on the part of uh, the giant club called Arsenal. Arsenal took uh, Manchester United to the cleaners. Arsenal took Manchester United to the cleaners. It was a tense atmosphere. I was present at the Emirates yesterday when that match was going to be played. In fact, from the beginning, the crowd, from the, the Emirates crowd, saw so much. There were so many in numbers that um, came to the Emirates to witness, to witness this thing firsthand, you know, live. As they say, you can't rewind life. So... Life itself is taking place live in, in the Emirates. So everybody came to see it. And then um, the Arsenal fans, some of them travel from far and wide, from different, different countries to come and witness this very important football match between two giants, Manchester United and Arsenal. Uh, you know, when they play against each other in, uh, in uh, the Premier League, from all indications, they have not been successful to some extent, in winning their matches at the Emirates. So, this was another chance for Eric Ten Hag and his boys to come and tell history, bye-bye to you, this is the new uh, king in town, the sheriff in town. But uh, he eventually ended up to re-announce that this is the new defeated in town. So, Arsenal lined up his players, um, you know, we have been playing makeshift kind of uh, tactics formation since the beginning of the league, using uh, Ben White at the middle and then using Pate at the right hand, uh, right right back. Now, we won't say we rejoiced, but uh, Ateta's hand has been forced eventually to listen to the voice of reasoning. The voice of reasoning. He eventually did not play party, not because of his own volition. It was because Thomas Partey got injured and the assessment showed that uh, a groin injury also related to his hamstring or so would not allow him to play for the next six weeks. So what did Mr. Gaffer do, Mr. Teta? He decided to listen to the voice of reasoning restored the Bremen Magalis to his original kingship position to lie in wait for Manchester United and make sure he disgraces them. So the first half started, everybody was tensed in the, in the stadium. Uh, the Emirates fans were cheering up the Arsenal players. Uh, surprisingly, Manchester United was the one that drew the first sword. Um, Rashford gallivanted and uh, found his way into our Etihad box. Uh, ben White and Saliba could not block him. And he fired straight. I think he hit the post and then entered straight uh, into our net. Either way, he found his way into our net. And that alone started the benchmark for the match. The benchmark for the mark, match started. At this point in time, I can tell you, a lot of Arsenal fans were very, very angry. Some during the, uh, uh, the first half break, when they came out for tea and uh, drinks, they were very angry. Uh, they, they made their voice known why we should allow Manchester United to score at all. But their goal was, uh, so to say, their goal was short-lived. Because I bet you, uh, they were rubbing their hands that today is their day. If, if they had known that that was the, the sad pill that they would take and it will end up on a sad note. All the guys have been fantastic, mobilized our players after Ateta had had one-on-one -on -one talk with him on the touchline to redirect him, to refocus the strategy that has been planned for this game. And as soon as he entered, when the, uh, the first uh, kick was taken after the regulation, I mean, after the goal was scored, Arsenal was on the front foot, pressed Manchester United to their half, 
and behold, a cut back from Martinelli on the other side too, uh, ended up in the hands of, in the legs of Odega. Of course, they had swapped all Manchester United players to one side. And uh, gracefully, Odega, not minding his age, but his capability as our captain, swapped with uh, dexterity his body and fired the ball into the net. Onana could not find the ball. The ball was already in the net. Mark you, when um, Manchester United scored, Onana was making jests in his behavior to Arsenal fans. And then, of course, he was shown a yellow card for time wasting and all that. So, Arsenal fans got back again, you know. Some of them, when they were singing the songs, You'll be hearing Onana uh, S, Onana S, Onana F S, you know. Uh, it was a very tense atmosphere. Now, controversy entered. You know, I don't like VARO. I only like them, I liked it when they introduced it. Uh, when they introduced it, I thought it would be used to stop injustice. But to my greatest dismay, the decisions and revelations that came from uh, from uh, VARO are very uh, they are not balanced questionable and uh, sometimes too obvious to, to the eyes of the fans and viewers that they have uh, you know cheated a vulnerable team of the day so again it surfaced again in our match VARO Havertz was brought down, impeded, obstructed, any name you want to call it, by one Bissaka and Casimiro. They brought him down, he missed his step in the 80 yard box as he was through on goal to score. I can't recall any yellow card given to any of them. The referee pointed to the penalty spot, but uh, in the wise decision of the unwise uh, elders at the, at the VRO circles, because they, it's just a circles. They, they, I don't think they are serious up there. People who have not played football before, they, they have, have no clue of what football is, how it is played. They just read rules. They are theory footballers. They interpreted it that it was not obvious and that there, no uh, contact was made by Juan Bissaka to obstruct, uh, what do you call it, Kai Havertz from redeeming his name. Because he had disgraced himself, disappointed himself, disappointed the Arsenal fans when uh, he could not uh, convert a clear chance that landed uh, on his feet. He miskicked the ball and in the process, uh, he ended up uh, fluffing his shot and then... Uh, we could not take that chance. So that being said, VRO, everybody waited for the goal, for the interpretation of the obstruction, the foul. To our greatest uh, surprise, even the pundits, the Manchester United pundits uh, on YouTube, vloggers, uh, uh, TV stations, uh, like, you know, most of the, uh, what do you call it? The people who follow football, fans alike of Man U, initially, Ghostbridge and Co. thought it was a penalty. After the VRO interpreted it, they swayed the amount, they swear, swapped the amount to the left to say, oh, actually, he didn't really, really touch, uh, you know, Kai Havert. Anyway, Kai Havertz continued his controversial uh, display because uh, he has divided his, his presence in Arsenal, has divided the Arsenal fans. Most of them I've spoken to when, before the match, you know, they don't really like Harvard. I spoke to about three, four people and some other people who have mentioned their, uh, who have gave their, given their opinion about Harvard. Just restated what they have been saying. Harvard get, had a, a, a pass, just a simple pass to our player, 
the force he applied was very little. And of course, a Manchester United player lashed on it. And uh, before we knew it, I think that was what led to their first goal. Now, the game continued. They too had penalty appeal. Uh, was also overruled by VAR, uh, you know, by by the officials. Then it came again another controversial uh, decision by the VAR. Ginacho was through on goal. Uh, the cut through pass that came to him, one on one with Ramsday, uh, he took the shot effectively well. The ball landed in the net. Manchester United fans were celebrating. They were all over the place. Uh, nobody could con control them. Uh, they were screaming. Swear words were spoken every anyhow. V vloggers, those who do YouTube, um, Ghost Bridge, and uh, all of that channels I watched, they had they were swearing freely on YouTube, uh, abusing Arsenal. Why that go entered? But to their greatest surprise, VRO, I think they wanted to balance the bad decision they took against us when against Arsenal when uh, Harvard was not giving the penalty. Arsenal was not giving the penalty. They ruled out the goal for a marginal offside. Uh, just a little bit of Ginato's body crossed the line. Therefore, no goal was the decision. Manchester United fans, the whole stadium, while Arsenal fans were rejoicing, Manchester United fans were in sorrow. I want to tell you one funny thing that happened. That's why they are trolling uh, my, uh, Arsenal fans. Immediately that second goal was scored because the review for the VRO took time. A lot of Arsenal fans trooped out going home. What nonsense. Is this what we paid money to come and watch? We said it, Ateta. Uh, I'm quoting them now. Ateta is an F, is a, is a S, is a this and that. All manner of names were thrown at Ateta and his team. What have we done with our ball? In the T has spent 65 million buying her car, who is unproductive at the moment. So all manner of statements were being made. I don't think they have even reached Holloway train station or Arsenal train station. When the goal was ruled out, and to add to that display of uncertainty that made them left, that was when the ball itself started. The match started the exact 12 minutes or there about to the end was when the real game started. Why people leave their homes to come and watch the fight between the two giants? You know, when they said when two elephants fight. It was the grass at Emirates that suffered. It was not the fans who suffered. It was the grass that suffered. It was Manchester United fans that suffered. Those days, when they add minutes to Manchester United matches, Arsenal people will hold their head. They say, this is Fergie time. Because always acts in their favor. But uh, many of them knew too that uh, the pendulum could swing, swing to any other part, you know. And... Uh, when these uh, the minutes were added, for all the time being wasted, for goal celebration, for substitution, they were not sure what was going to happen. Arsenal brought in two very important substitutes, Jesus and Fabio Vera. Uh, like I told you people last time, I think Giorgio also entered and Nelson. Uh, I told you, uh, our fans, last time, that the way I see it, very soon, Fabio Vera will be benching uh, Kai Havertz. And it is not an understatement. Because just the way he proved himself in the Fulham game, he done it again. So what happened this time around was that before he performed, Arsenal had a corner which Saka took and dispatched very well with a lot of accuracy. Eventually landed with uh, Declan Rice, a 105 million pounds uh, senior player, uh, undefeated uh, import from West Ham, where they won the Europa Conference League. You know, he's still hanging the medal 
of a community shield on his neck and that of the conference lay and that of Emirates God. So it was not too heavy for him. He still had chest to receive Saka's ball. He landed on his chest. He did it. Bah. Settled it down. He, the boy won't have time to, to drop and reposition. Meanwhile, as that was going on, focus was not on Declan Rice at all because one, he doesn't look like a potential goal scorer to them. Their eyes were on people like Magaliz, who always score with head for us. He has assistants of that. And every other player. Of course, one of uh, my youth players, I think it was even uh, one of their retirees, Johnny Evans. And uh, of course, you know, the own goal specialist, uh, Harry Maguire, was also at the back there. Of course, they were confused because at that point, they were doing wrestling. If I were, my youth fans thought that we fouled. Uh, Johnny Evans or so, it was him actually that bundled Gabriel Magalis to the floor. To the floor. So Rice chested the ball. The ball rolled on the floor. He fired the ball very hard though. It was so hard that it deflected to Johnny Evans and Onana's hand tried to touch it, but of course it was too hot. He found his way straight into the net. And if you check the ball, it will land at Onana's village. It was already there. The referee boy had to go and look for transport to bring the ball back. Look, as soon as that goal entered, the whole stadium, I am not joking, the rapture, the rapturous, uh, the, 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 the sound, the noise, the clapping, the singing, <clears throat> elevated to another stratosphere. If you see people Flashing their phones, trying to record the moment. Cameraman running because he ran towards the knee bend, slided towards the, and of course, all the, especially all the substitutes, uh, Magaliz, uh, Ketia, Jesus, Giorgio, Saliba, uh, David Ra, everybody found their way, took the first flight. Yes, British Airways, straight. To meet the guy, the Rice, to congratulate him. Meanwhile, as they sandwiched him, they pushed him towards the the, the fans. Of course, the fans had their own share in enjoying from the celebra enjoying the celebration. The Arsenal stewards were also sandwiched. I don't know how they rescued themselves from it until the celebration was over. At that point, Rice Baby, Rice Baby song took over. Rise the Bill song took over. You see? Vanilla, whatever. Eh? The song started the. As we do Rise Baby, Rise Baby, Rise Baby. Everywhere scattered with Rise Baby. If you are not part of it, you can't understand what we are talking about. Everywhere was moved. Even the grass was dancing. The Emirate grass responded to Declan Rice's shot. And gifted him that goal being, being expected. Long, long overdue. Yes, long overdue goal. Now, that alone demystified the tempo from Manchester United. Now, somebody said on YouTube, I said on YouTube that his coach told him that you are at your most vulnerable point when you just score a goal. That was when, that was when Manchester United now said, okay, the extra minutes given, let them see what they can do to rescue a point. Yes, rescue a point. To something to their fans, about 3,000 or whatever that came to see their misery. You see? And then, they all packed their, themselves towards Arsenal as a half. Forgetting that somebody needs to defend, though. You see? Like somebody also analyzed the game, which we are going to go immediately after the goals have been discussed. So, they moved into our half. As soon as we brought the ball out of the corner, I think it was a corner here. Yeah. As soon as we brought it out, the speed. You remember how this uh, very dangerous... <laughs> Player we have, <laughs> Fabio Vera, supplied the uh, 
ball to was it Martinelli? Yes, in one of the games, and also the one that got supplied that Martinelli was already celebrating even before it's got something like that happened. As soon as Fabio Vera got the ball, he didn't bother to run too much with the ball because on his right towards the middle, Gabriel Jesus, the Brazilian international, the Man City Serie winner, was already on his bike with, with full velocity. Velocity is moving at a very serious speed, 190 uh, kilometers per second. It was moving with lightning speed. What did uh, Fabio Vera do? He did not behave like Kai Havertz, who is, has an unsettled mind. No, 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 no. This one is mind is settled. He knows what we are doing. He increased the velocity by kicking the ball faster to 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 to, to away from the uh, what do you call it? The Manchester United player that was trying to stop him from making that true pass. He changed the direction of the ball. And as soon as Jesus got the ball, everybody was praying, arrive safely. Arrive safely with pregnancy of a goal. Arrive safely to deliver the ball you are having in your tummy, Jesus. As soon as he carried the ball, we were praying, is he going to lob it through the goalkeeper's head? And there was one defender left to be beaten. How is he going to uh, carry out the experiment? To the glory of God, he did as if he was going to the left. And so the, the defender followed him to the left. Jesus brought the ball back to the right and positioned it where he can finally destroy Manchester United and remove the U. <laughs> My friends, the defender from Manchester United, I've told his name is Dalo. That is the same person, Rio Ferdinand, if I remember, uh, when they were saying how good Saliba and who we can choose as the person in his best team, I think he was saying his Dalot was better than one of our defenders. Look, this guy was sent to the shops. You know when you do water fall, how you slide, slide in the water, eh? if you snow is slower. When you enter water fall, it takes you brrr, like that. <laughs> That's how this guy was on the floor, sliding towards Manchester. He bought, no bother to take their bus back home. He was sliding with so much speed that we had to beg somebody to hold, you know. And the ball, oh my God. Jesus calculated the position of Onana. Onana. And the ball entered into the net. Quite an Onana. As he entered, of course, that was the last straw that destroyed not only the camel's back, that destroyed Manchester United's back. Eric Tenha was deflated. Onana was deflated. Manchester United fans were deflated. Their players were deflated and busted. Nothing left, no air left anywhere. Not long after then, the match ended. Now, when you consider the presentation, the players man you presented, they presented in the midfield what you can call old gagoos. Yes, you know, this channel will speak our English. Old gagoos. So, Casimero and uh, Eric Sin, they were above 30 against a dynamic midfield of Arsenal and runners like Saka and uh, Martinelli. <clears throat> we told the guy, Declara is about 24 years old. So they could not withstand that. And the time Ateta introduced Jesus and all those other uh, Jesus to come in, and other people, they could not be, they cannot cope with the speed that was now added. Look at the defense. Johnny Evans is about 35. He's even left Man U, I think even gone to West Brook, gone to all over the world to play, and all over the Premier League clubs, relegated. And he's now, he has now been courted to come and do SOS, come and save our soul by Manchester United. I cannot imagine how Manchester United will go and resurrect his career. 
when you know that. So it just shows that the priority of Manchester United is no longer to win the Premier League. Uh, they used to say Arsenal is a banter club and all this, they laugh at us. Their priority has changed now to first four. That same first four they used to laugh at us. Say, oh, first four is not a cup. That's the one they want to take now. So, for them, re recruiting Johnny Evans tells the whole story. For them, reabsorbing an own goal specialist like Harry Maguire into their back four shows you the depth of their players. But don't worry, I know that you will say they have injuries. Uh, Luke Shaw got injured. Uh, Martinez, uh, who they say is a butcher by nickname, also got injured. Other clubs have injuries. But are we now importing Thierry Henry? No, we are not. Are we importing Giroud to come back? No, we are not. Are we bringing back uh, a right? No. What you have just done was to bring back somebody like Roy Keane. There's no difference. Bring back Gary Neville to help you at the back. Look at the difference. Eh? John Evans is 35, not even his age. Is, because uh, when we look at how Thiago Silva is performing in Chelsea, you can't even go there. So, these guys, they were not serious with their lineup. And many of them, as truthful as they were, did not expect to win. They wanted to get a point at least. History was not on their side. Present day life was not on their side. They have players, even some of his players, I even heard uh, Jaden Jade Sancho uh, coming out to, to give a different statement that uh, which the coach said he was not fit. The guy said I was fit. So, of course, he will face the punishment from uh, <laughs> Mr. Eric Tyrell for daring to open his mouth to talk like that. So, this man witnessed a lot of uh, events. At the end of the day, we thank God all these events came in favor of Arsenal. Arsenal got the three points. Before the international break now, we are going home to sleep very well. Most of our players, as I've told you, have been called to the national team. But they'll be going to the national team with their heads head high. As uh, <clears throat> uh, Ramsey said in his interview, he, the debrief of this match will not be done until about 10 days' time when they are coming back, when they come back, you know, from international break. And uh, uh, Declan Rice, I'm very happy. He has proved all the critics wrong. Anybody that says it's not worth 105 should go and have a rethink now. You can see that he has started repaying Arsenal for the uh, price we paid to West Ham. He has focused on his game. He has not let the he has not been carried away by the price tag, unlike others, Pepe and Havertz, who are suffering in silence in the labor market. He's humble. He's willing to learn. Every time you interview him, he wants to learn more. Those are the kind of players we want. Look, Mr. Teta, even when party comes back, do not scatter or put sand in the soup where everybody is now eating from. Go home. Go and look for another tactics. To improve the one we have, leave our back for a loan. Leave them a go. Look, if there's no other sign to tell you, you can see that this is providence. Eh? Nature has helped us and delivered us from the hand of Ateta from featuring that dangerous back for uh, they kept everybody on the seat uh, against our four, uh, you know, in our first three games. Please like, share, and subscribe. We thank all our subscribers, the new ones that you know are encouraging us on this platform. Please help us share this video to everyone. I hope we have tried to capture what happened in that match. And uh, when you give us your comments, we will learn more from it. Share this video to your friends. Click the uh, like button. Hit the notification bell so that when our videos come, you'll be one of the first to receive it. Please subscribe. We play with you to subscribe and take us to 500 and beyond. Thank you for watching this video. We are honored that you watched it. And we will see you next time when we play our next match.